Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a really cool video for you where I'm gonna show you how to build a micro batching kind of streaming hybrid pipeline where you're gonna use Airflow to listen to a Kafka topic. Uh, and every time 50 rows have been generated within that Kafka topic, take those 50 rows uh, and then upload them into Snowflake. But we're gonna use deferrable operators, not sensors, so we can pass that kind of sensor workload off to the dedicated Airflow trigger so you can run this for as pretty much as long as you want, only paying for the processing time when you're actually processing those 50 rows. So really cost effective way if you're looking to implement a strategy where, hey, I want to implement streaming like, but I don't really wanna process every single data point. I wanna process small batches because it might come in really fast and I gotta update it really fast or those 50 rows might take all day to generate, in which case I don't really need it until another 50 rows have been generated. Uh, but whatever your use case, whatever your thing is, this might be uh, something you're interested in. So really hope you uh, enjoy this video and without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just quickly open up terminal and create a new empty repository. So here in terminal, I'm gonna scroll up so you guys can see it. And then we're gonna do a CD into desktop, repos, and then make directory micro batch streaming, and then CD into that, and run astro dev init. And this will just create a new blank airflow uh, directory. So once we're done with that, open it up. So go open finder, desktop, data guy video repos, micro batch streaming, and boom, here we are. So first thing we're gonna do here is go to our requirements file and just bring in all the packages and requirements we'll need for this deck. Not a ton of them, but just make sure you have the uh, Apache Airflow provider for Kafka or Snowflake. Uh, for Amazon, just because we're going to use an S3 to Snowflake operator, because we're going to use an S3 bucket as the staging area for Snowflake. If you don't want to use S3 buckets as your staging area, just whatever staging provider you're going to use before we upload it into Snowflake, put that in here instead. Boot23, this is just for interacting with that S3 bucket programmatically. And then Kafka Python is for being able to use the Kafka Python interpreter here so we can actually execute and write a little bit of the, Py of the Kafka logic within our deck. So save this and then go over your DAGs folder, create a new DAG, call it micro batch DAG.py. And then what we'll do is start building our DAGs, and, or our DAG. <laughs> and so first uh, bring in all of our different packages and requirements. So Airflow DAG, Python operator, base sensor operator. So just brought in you know, for any kind of base sensor. Um, and then here, also have the S3 Snowflake operator, Kafka dedicated sensor. Um, and these, again, we're gonna use deferrable mode on these, so it won't actually be a sensor, but they're still called that. Um, and then days ago, just utils, so we can do a little time check against previous operations. Um, date time for date time and time delta, so we can just use easy date time operations as well. And then typing list, this is just kind of uh, an easy way for us to just type in and, and make a list of uh, different objects. So once we have all of our packages and requirements in place, now we need to start bringing in all of the different variables we're gonna use. So here, set these all at the top in case you ever need to change them. So first your Kafka topic, the snowflake table you want to upload these rows into, uh, the S3 bucket we're using for that staging area, and then the key, uh, so just the reference to where you're gonna store that data within the S3 bucket before it gets brought into Snowflake. So just make sure you set that all those all set as the variables you'll actually be using. And then we're gonna define our first function. Um, and so our first function we're gonna use is just creating one that's going to process Kafka messages. So here, find pro process Kafka messages and pass in star star context. We can access XCOM from previous DAGs. And then here, what we're going to do is use XCOM poll method to pull from the task ID uh, monitor Kafka, get the task instance, uh, and then get the messages that are stored within that. Um, if there's no messages, then there's gonna be a no messages retrieve Kafka message that we're going to raise. Then we're going to process those messages and upload them uh, to S3. So, you know, in practice, you'd probably do a little bit more processing here. Uh, but here I'm just gonna write the messages that we're getting from this Kafka topic uh, immediately into uh, our 
into our S3 bucket. So this is our producer uh, script, but we also want to have our consumer object because we're going to, or sorry, not our producer, this is our processor, but we need to actually consume those messages from Kafka before we can process them. So for that, we're gonna add one more variable, the Kafka bootstrap servers, and then also define this consume Kafka messages to, uh, operation. So here with consume Kafka messages, we're gonna pass in that Kafka topic, the server you're running Kafka on, target message count, so in this case 50, and then what this is going to do is call the Kafka consumer uh, task, uh, function really, and then pass in a lot of these same values, uh, say, hey, offset to the earliest, enable auto commit, um, and then value to serialize or so use JSON loads to pull that data out. And then also forgot to add these earlier, but make sure you also have your variables. Um, so here, Airflow models import variable, Kafka consumer, and import JSON. So apologies, I missed these earlier, um, but have all those in here so that gets rid of these error messages. And then what here we're gonna have is just basically say, hey, load all these JSON, uh, these messages from Kafka using the JSON loads method, um, and then add them all to this array. Um, and if this length of this array exceeds 50, then break it off, close this consume, this consume object, and then uh, return that array of 50 messages that was generated. Now, the next thing we're gonna do after that, so we consume the Kafka messages, is write a really beefy class to define a co custom Kafka message uh, counter sensor. Um, so this is kind of the, the secret sauce that we came up with. Um, and so here, what we're gonna do is define, initialize an object where, hey, we want to bring in Kafka topic as a string, servers, target message count, all this string, and then what's happening here is this sensor class is going to use the consume Kafka messages function to read from the Kafka topic, check if the required number of messages have been, have been reached, and then if so, it's gonna push those messages to XCOM for further processing, so pairing this with our process messages and also consume Kafka messages. So here, we have three functions here, so init, so just you know starting up um, within this class, and then we also have poke, so this is going to poke uh, that Kafka topic, check, hey, has it reached our target message count? Um, once it reaches over or um, that target message count, then push those messages downstream uh, into in, in, under the key Kafka messages into our task, which is actually going to consume them. Um, and then also if it times out that we're receiving enough messages, you'll receive that as well. Um, but because we're using the reschedule method to use the deferable operators is, isn't really gonna be relevant because it'll just always keep rescheduling itself rather than actually timing out. Then next what we're gonna do is actually start building our DAG logic. And so for that, we're gonna need to do is just go create with DAG. So here, a little old school, but you know, feeling a little old school today. Um, and then first task within our DAG is going to be monitor Kafka, where we're going to use that uh, Kafka message counter sensor to monitor Kafka for that Kafka topic, pass in that target message count, use these Kafka servers, so just the Kafka bootstrap servers running on a local machine, reschedule, so this is the mode you really need to reset to make sure you're using the deferable behavior, otherwise this is going to take up a worker slot. And that's kind of the whole crux of this, is this is only efficient because it's able to make use of that airflow trigger node rather than taking up a worker slot. So make sure you have, this is really the critical piece here, um, is having that reschedule mode. And then just the poke interval for every five seconds, it'll do a check. Um, and you can adjust that to whatever you know your your desired latency is. Um, but you know I'm trying to go for near real time, so five seconds seems appropriate. Then next, we're going to just have process messages here. So use a Python operator to process those messages. So just define using this function we created earlier. Um, and then what that is going to do is just upload it into S3 as we saw. And then our last step is to actually upload it into Snowflake. So upload to Snowflake, S3 Snowflake operator connection ID, task ID, S3 keys, stage, table, file format, all the necessary kind of configuration details Snowflake will need to actually read in your data properly. And then just tie it all together with a quick little bit mapping down here, monitor a Kafka and a process messages into upload to Snowflake. Um, so really, really simple uh, way to set up kind of a micro batching workflow within Airflow um, and 
have it monitor that Kafka topic, wait for 50 rows, process those 50 rows, upload in a Snowflake. Um, and this is also a really easy DAG to parameterize. So if you want to have this, you're listening to many different Kafka topics, you could use something like a DAG factory to inject those different topic names, different Snowflake tables. You're going to use uh, and build a whole set of these DAGs dynamically and have all these running in parallel, sensing and processing and just uh, powering your entire data infrastructure. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I found it a lot of fun to make. Um, I just, this is just something cool I built and wanted to show off. So hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.